Hey everyone, today I wanna to give you five easy ways that you can start learning 3D modeling today using one of my favorite 3D modeling apps, which is Nomad Sculpt. It's available over on your iPads, Android tablets, or even on your mobile phones. It's only $15 for this wildly robust app, and there's even a free trial option directly on their website if you wanted to try it out yourself before buying it. And what's even crazier is there are some absolutely amazing tutorials that you can find here online, and I wanna highlight some of the absolute best of them so that you can get started learning how to use this app and then I'm going to show you how I went off and 3D modeled a mask that I went off and 3D printed. Now if you go on YouTube and search Nomad Sculpt, more than likely you'll see one of Dave Reed's videos pop up. He has been making videos using Nomad Sculpt almost daily for the past year. It's very impressive the amount of videos, sometimes even twice a day he's posting videos about creating different things in Nomad Sculpt, a lot of those being tutorials or even time lapses of the modeling process that you can just sit back and watch how he's proceeding. But one of the most popular videos that he has on his channel is a crash course on Nomad Sculpt for beginners that walks you through the entire process of creating your own little character. He's even gone ahead and made a newer iteration of that for 2023, with both of which I will definitely have linked to down below. And I highly recommend checking out both of those videos that are gonna give you a great overview of how to use Nomad Sculpt. And if you're looking for something a lot more detailed oriented, he has some paid classes over on Udemy me, including a Batman statue sculpture class in Nomad Sculpt that I just recently picked up that I'll be doing a follow-up video on, on my progress of making my own Batman statue. Really excited about that one. Another creator you should definitely be checking out is Erica over at Small Robot Studios, who I think has one of the most popular Nomad Sculpt tutorial videos with her Nomad Sculpt Beginner's Guide Tutorial 2021. It also is an updated 2023 version. However, this 2021 version is still valid and plus you get an amazing looking sculpt at the end of it. One really cool thing that you should definitely check out is especially if you're into Zelda and creating your own little characters, she has a tutorial on how to make your own little crow Croco, Croco, I don't quite know how to pronounce it, available there in one of her recent videos. Again, another channel that has just some amazing tutorials on different tips and tricks on how to use different functionality within Nomad Sculpt, as well as just some basic tutorials. And one of the really popular creators when it comes to learning Nomad Sculpt is Southern GFX, who has, I think, been making these videos for three years now, something like that. Whenever Nomad launched, I started seeing Glenn's videos and started watching them and learning from him how to better use Nomad Sculpt. And in fact, he has a whole beginner series of videos that I highly recommend you check out to learn how to create your own character and go through the different stages and steps of actually modeling and creating that directly in Nomad. Now, Glenn also has his own Facebook group for Nomad and other 3D modeling apps, which is another great place to learn tips and tricks about using this application. But he also has a few paid classes, including one on creating a dragon that was wildly popular over the holiday season and a new recent one about a creature creation tutorial series that I'm definitely picking up and gonna be practicing with. Now let's say you've gone through some of the other creators basic tutorials that I've mentioned previously and you wanna learn some more about some other functions that are available within Nomad. I highly recommend checking out Procreate FX who has some great tutorial videos on each of these individual functions that's available within the application that might be useful when it comes to 3D modeling the different things that you're interested in. Plus, he also has some free additional brushes that you can download and install that'll give you more sculpting options when working within Nomad. There are also some paid options as well if you're interested in those that are available in their Etsy shop. And here are a few bonus options for those of you interested in short form content, a little like myself, the first of which being Scenic Curiosities that creates these little creatures and shows you how to use some of the different tools directly in Nomad. And then we have Above Wong Art that's creating these incredible looking masks and showing you his entire process from sketching to 3D modeling to 3D printing. Both of these artists are just incredible and I highly recommend checking them out. Now the last option is a bit of a cop out. However, it's easily my favorite out of all of them. It's probably my most used and that's by joining the Nomad Discord and Facebook groups. There are so many incredible like inspirational things that are being posted on those that I'm just in awe of what can be actually designed and modeled directly in this application. Not to mention all the tips and troubleshooting 
it's just a wealth of knowledge that you can be found directly inside of those groups. And I cannot recommend joining those enough. Plus there's also random challenges that are thrown in there. Like th who can 3d model a pretzel and people showing that off. I have no idea what that was all about, but it was fun seeing it happen. So now that I've shown you a few different ways that you can get started with Nomad, let me show you a mask that I quickly sculpted while on a flight home from California after visiting Disneyland. I was at the Guardians of the Galaxy ride and saw a dark elf mask from one of the Thor movies and I thought it was so cool and haven't remember seeing one online anywhere. So I figured I'd try my hand at sculpting one. It didn't quite turn out exactly how I wanted it, but I still think it turned out pretty good. And let me show you how I went about doing this. Now again, I did all this while on my flight and I ended up using a 3D scan of my head and I recognize that not all of you have 3D scans of your heads. Thankfully, inside of Nomad, I just recently learned that there is now an actual 3D head object that you can insert into your scene and start 3D sculpting off of. But for me, what I ended up using was a 3D scan of my head and from here, I started with basically just using some of the mask functionality since I'm gonna mask off a portion of my face here and once I get it to about the shape that I'm interested in working with here, I can come up into the top corner here and selecting extract as the option. You can mess around with the smoothness and the thickness if you'd like to make it thicker or thinner depending on how you wanna extract it, but it's gonna give me a shell or basically a mask that I can start working with. And from here, I can basically just use some of the core functionality in here. The top functions that are available in Nomad and the top right hand corner are the core ones that I'm typically using. So I'm coming in here and pinching and pulling different areas of the mask in different shapes and objects so I can get it to the proportions that I'm looking for for this particular project. Also, one thing that you'll notice is I have a bunch of reference images here on the side of my application. I'm using another program called VizRiff that allows me to store a bunch of images that I can see on the side. There is actually a way to do this directly inside of Nomad. I just don't know how to do it. I need to follow one of those tutorials that probably one of the creators that I've shown you here today have shown how to use. But I was just basically using the clay buildup tool to add features and definition to the different areas of the mask and you have the ability to add or subtract as you're sculpting directly on the surface of these three models. One other critical thing that you wanna pay attention to is that whenever you're using a, making a mask or something extremely thin, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention and going up into the brush options and then go under filter and making sure that front face the front facing vertice only is selected when working with that particular brush. This way it's not gonna go all the way through the object that you're 3D modeling when working with it. Once I got it to a place that I was relatively happy with, I decided I wanted to carve out the holes for the eyes. So I just used the trim tool and there is an ellipse option within the trim tool that'll allow me to add circles. And since symmetry is on, it's gonna dig holes directly through our mask and create those eye openings for us. And then again, I'm gonna use the clay buildup tool to continually add more details to this. I've left everything pretty low resolution here early on as I'm continuing to build up and work on this mask. You can also change the color of the objects that you're working with. I was just working with the different matte cap options here. So I found one that was relatively the same tone as the mask that I was trying to make and then went through and remeshed the object to give it a little bit better cleanliness of the 3D object. Again, I'm no expert when it comes to 3D modeling. The other people that I've called out in this video are much better than I am at anything that I'm 3D modeling. But I'm basically gonna continue to smooth out and add details using the clay buildup tool Tool throughout this mask building process. I also ended up utilizing the pinch and crease tool when it came to modeling the details around the mouth. Once I was happy with the overall progress that I was making with it, I started smoothing out the overall shape of the mask and then adding the refined details that we see on the mask, like the little lines that go down from the eyes, as well as the little indents and little sketches or carvations that are occurring on the mask. So just again, utilizing some of the basic tools that are on there, there's nothing special that I'm using within this to get a lot of the details that we're seeing on the mask. And once I was happy with the overall look of the mask, I can go up under the folder structure and select under export as OBJ or STL, and then wirelessly send that over to my computer, or I can then process that for 3D printing. 
Now, before running off in 3D printing anything, I just like to double check that there's no issues with any of my files. So I'm gonna bring them into Mesh Mixer or you can use any other file repair tool that you might like. And I'm gonna go under Analyze and then Inspector. And I can see that there are in fact some issues that need to be cleaned up. So I'm gonna auto repair and it's cleaned up this file and I can export it back out. Now I can get it ready for 3D printing. And in this case, I wanna resin 3D print this mask. So I'm bringing it into Cheetu Box and getting supports all added to the mask and then getting it sliced up and I'm gonna wirelessly send it directly to the Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra. And while our mask is printing, I wanna say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Elegoo, the makers of the Saturn 3 Ultra. This is a 10 inch 12K resolution resin 3D printer that is also sporting Wi-Fi, allowing you to wirelessly send files that you slice on your computer directly to the machine for printing. This thing prints stupidly fast and has a massive build volume, allowing you to print pretty much anything that you're now designing directly out of Nomad. And if for some reason you didn't want to print in resin, they also now have some new FDM 3D printers, the Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro. These new machines are up and available over on Elegoo's website, which you can find more information about linked down below. And here are the results of our 3D designed mask that I went off and made in Nomad and printed here on the Saturn 3 Ultra. And it printed off beautifully. I mean, I, I was expecting it to look pretty dang good here. I ended up using some white resin for this because I figure if I'm gonna end up pigmenting this or staining it slightly, one area that I am seeing a slight issue with my design is I must have gone a little too thin in some of these areas here. That's one thing that I quite haven't figured out how to master or figure out until I've run off and 3D printed things. So I'm gonna go back and beef up some of the backside of the mask for those areas so it's not so thin and hollowing out in those. And if you're interested in printing one of these for yourself, I'm going to be making the files available to my Patreon members, which I also wanted to say a big, huge thank you to for your continuous support of me making content here over on the interwebs. And if you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can also find those in my Patreon. And one thing that I love about 3D modeling combined with 3D printing is that I can actually physically touch and hold something that I've made for myself and then share it with folks like yourselves out there. Let me know what you guys think about this mask design and if you have any other tips or suggestions on how you like to learn things like 3D modeling and Nomad Sculpt. I just wanna say thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed and learned something new today and I'll see you next time. Bye now. This is like the perfect fit. It looks small, but it's designed to be small. But it's the, honestly, it's like the perfect fit to my face. It's so cool. I love doing things like this.